Hey, so um, this is a fairly fun little project that we managed to turn around quite quickly. Um, the Markables uh, Ski Field Road um, is a fairly long and um, tortuous little track that goes up to the ski field um, just near Frankton, Queenstown. Derek Chin, uh, our alpinist and structural engineer, uh, was the first on site to go and see this problem. Uh, so he arrived on site to, uh, let me see if I can get the pictures, to this reasonably significant looking dropout. There was some concerns on site. Um, we had the site closed down to a single lane. Uh, it was quite a long dropout, I think 15 or 20 meters long, and a fairly significant drop um, following a fairly bad rainfall event. Um, so Derek popped out on site. He had some concerns, agreed with the lane closure, and commenced doing uh, an initial design for how we could possibly prop this up. Um, the next day, uh, we agreed that um, in order to try and steal some additional width on the other side of the road, we would bring in a pipe. Uh, this is actually here just for storage at the moment. Uh, bury it into the dish channel and then cover the dish channel over so that uh, the dish channel would work, but be a drivable surface so we could steal an extra half a meter or so. Uh, this is, I think this is Derek, but um, you can see this is the next day. The drop had uh, increased by another maybe two or 300 mils vertically and we're starting to move out. So we had a sense that um, it was a fairly bad uh, sidling failure. Uh, Derek the bugger um, that day actually managed to get up in a helicopter to look at a couple of other jobs and uh, made a side uh, trip uh, because this is quite close to the airport. Uh, so he got a view of this uh, slip from the air and you can see that uh, it's quite a significant scarp on here, but the bulging is coming around uh, quite a long way and as much as the failure is limited to here on the road um, there's actually quite a lot of cracking going on in this area as well. Um, so uh, a couple of days later uh, of uh, management and uh, estimating what the uh, solution was likely to look like uh, I came along with Derek um, and again at this point we uh, were really asking ourselves whether or not this shoulder is going to hang in for any length of time um, but uh, I managed to fly the site with a drone. Um, we're actually within uh, four k's of the airport at this point. So uh, this is, I guess, the first time I have used uh, Stantex Part 102 Exposition in anger. Uh, so I checked in with the airport, uh, asked them if I could have permission to fly. Initially, I wanted to be under 400 feet, um, but because of the proximity of the flight path, and the steep terrain, um, the tower asked me to stay under 200 feet. Um, I actually ended up staying under about 50 meters, so I was um, I was kind of well within the kind of worry zone. Um, thankfully, it was interesting to see the chaps from NZ Ski on site. Uh, one of their first questions to me was, had I cleared it with the tower? Um, so it's nice to know that everybody's on the same page in terms of safety. Uh, so from the drone flight, uh, we managed to get, uh, it's always a interesting picture but uh, we managed to get a pretty picture of the site um, and it looks interesting in that uh, you can see the actual uh, extent of the site um, it carries on for quite a long way and starts to tail off at about the point of this uh, red mark um, that was painted that's not the interesting part the, the interesting part is that uh, because we've got the model we've actually got something that is in uh, scale um, so we had originally attempted to look at a solution whereby we could reinstall this back to uh, two lane width um, but the geometry if I can pull up the pictures uh, the geometry made it pretty clear um, that uh, a one-to-one -one temporary excavation uh, from from the back of the scarp wasn't really going to give us much in the way of uh, a working bench uh, and we had intended to go quite a long way down the hill in order to win a significant bench for construction. We didn't have that, um, so we had to go back to NZ Ski and discuss uh, the potential requirements of uh, reducing the service at this point down to a single lane. Um, we were nervous, genuinely, about the uh, the potential for this debris to carry on off down the hill. Um, it's deep into residual shear strength, no, no cohesion left in the model, so really just a bit of friction left in the gravels that are there. Um, but Edward Guerrero in our Queenstown office, um, he knows how to drive slope W. I didn't have time that day, but uh, Edward made time. Uh, the model was relatively straightforward to work out um, 
what the internal mechanical properties of this shoulder fill must be to give us a factor of safety of just less than one. Um, so a little bit of back analysis. And then we could uh, do an excavation onto that model and say, OK, well, we were gaining 10 to 12 percent safety, not enough to rely upon, but um, certainly enough to give us some confidence that we would slow down that movement uh, during construction. Um, Derek went back to NZ Ski uh, with the, the detailed information that we've been able to provide. And Derek could come up with uh, a design that we know isn't a long-term solution design, but um, it, uh, it is uh, definitely a belt and braces uh, uh, stick up of the current situation, really just to try to, uh, to maintain the shoulder of the road. Um, the debris that's out, uh, the shoulder side cast material that's on the side is, is really has to be kissed goodbye. Um, but yeah, we were able to, from true geometry, look at a true slope stability model and, uh, and very quickly look at uh, the length of anchors that are going to be needed to tie back into the countryside and um, hopefully come up with a solution. So um, Derek, I think, saw the site on a, a Monday afternoon um, and over the next two days uh, really came to quite a strong concern that uh, we were going to have to anchor this solution. I fly the, flew the site on a Thursday. Uh, and by uh, Friday lunchtime, we had the model back from the from the flight. Um, and Edward uh, did the did the slope W modeling that afternoon. And uh, and Derek had uh, finalized this geometry um, for Friday evening. Um, so on Friday evening, poor Derek and a whole bunch of guys were out there um, digging after uh, the public had gone home. Uh, to try and uh, essentially get the platform excavated so that we could uh, we could get the zero swing uh, machine down later. So this is the big fella um, moving. I think we moved about four or five hundred tons of uh, dirt that day, that overnight. Um, thankfully, we had good weather, and uh, and over the next couple of days we had um, the uh, self drilling anchor rig come in from Fulton Hogan. Uh, they have this uh, gear with a, a zero swing back excavator and a fairly interesting sort of gimbal arrangement on the head of the digger so that they can hold on to the air track for a top driven uh, self self drilling anchor so the actual drill rods become the anchors um, so they will be uh, drilled and glued in and uh, sacrificially left in place as as a self anchor and Derek's taken some lovely pictures of the site just to show you uh, what a beautiful environment it is and, uh, and to see <laughs> Kind of how precipitous the uh, the slope is. It's a genuine 36 degree global slope, and locally it's at uh, 40, 42 degrees. Um, definitely an interesting project. Yeah, it's good.